Fort Vancouver Regional Libraries is excited to host Vancouver artist Rebecca Rodilla. Rebecca invited us to learn more about how she builds an altar and to share some of her experiences with this tradition in honor of Dia de los Muertos. So a little bit about myself. I am Rebecca Rodella. Um, I'm 30 years old and I am a Chicana artist based here in Vancouver, Washington. And I am also a tattoo artist um, based out of Southeast Portland. And so um, a lot of my work is based off of uh, my culture, especially my paintings. Um, but I also tie that in with the work that I do with tattooing. I try to make, you know, that intimidating type of art form as um, accessible and approachable to many people because um, especially in the Pacific Northwest that there isn't necessarily a whole bunch of diversity. I try to incorporate that and also um, make it just a comfortable, almost um, homey type of feel when people come in. And then with my paintings, as I mentioned, it a lot of it has a bunch of cultural ties. Um, a lot of my work is figurative and I base it off of my own family um, and um, portraits and family photographs and those types of records and making them so that they are um, kind of modern day icon. That we celebrate uh, Dia de los Muertos every year. It's a big deal with us. I know that sometimes when people visit our house or have in the past before uh, pandemic times, um, they would see it because it is right here as you walk into the front door and they're like, what is this? Like, that is, that's cool, but also what is going on here? It's also something, you know, they'll have that type of reaction just because it's something that not a lot of people know about or are very knowledgeable about. I feel like, especially in more recent years, as people have gotten more comfortable with kind of experimenting around uh, this time of year and with um, Halloween, uh, they have you know, only seen little bits and pieces, like little kitschy things as the movie Coco definitely brought it to light, um, gave little bits of information while still making it you know, entertaining and um, welcoming to little kids and also families. I will be doing a setup for an altar, which has many different components. A lot of it is um, there are many layers of meaning behind every single little thing, even when it comes to like certain colors or the little uh, symbols or different things that you set on your altar. Everything is customizable, which is great. No two different houses are going to have the exact same thing. A little bit of background for Dia de los Muertos. It was started in the 1500s by the Aztecs that really wanted to pay homage and honor um, those um, loved ones that have just, that had died, to be frank. Dia de los Muertos, it goes, it's spread between two days, November 1st and November 2nd. November 1st is the day that is mainly honoring those children that have died. A lot of times what you'll see and what is used to represent those children's souls that have departed um, are monarch butterflies. That's a huge thing, especially um, in Mexico that you'll see, the monarch butterflies will then migrate south. And that basically represents the souls passing through the world. Then on November 2nd, um, it's an even bigger deal. And a huge thing that I want to emphasize is that Dia de los Muertos, it's a scary thing. It's not meant to be sad, although, you know, it is sad, you know, when um, a loved one has departed and is no longer with us, but it is really a huge emphasis on a celebration of life. That everything that you put on the altar has meaning and represents um, some type of element in the world and everything is sacred. Let's get started. This is just like a basic little foundation for an altar. We have our sarape just, you know, to have a little add more color to it and bring emphasis and light to the um, ofrendas, which are offerings that you place on an altar uh, for your departed loved one. What we do in our house, we drape papel picado and that in and of itself represents kind of the wind and the elements. So, and with wind, a lot of times that meaning is correlated with spirits, um, just moving throughout. 
and that they're always surrounding us no matter the time of year. It's not necessarily specific to a certain day. We keep a lantern on our altar and it's really just as a guiding light to spirits. We'll put that one right there. And you don't need to necessarily put it in a specific spot. It's just essentially what's gonna fit for everything. In our house, we have a one level altar. Typically, or in more traditional ones, you'll see there are three different levels and it represents heaven and then earth and then the underworld. And it just kind of ties everything together. That way there's even that further connection to the different worlds that we believe in. Um, another thing that we have, which represent our loved ones are, there are like these Katrina. For us, it's, you know, like a bride and groom. We put it up in our household especially for my maternal grandparents, my abuelita Lazara and abuelito Angel. Yeah, it's just another form of symbolism of also having something that's tangible beyond a photo. So we put this up here and then we have another extra room as well because we like doing everything big. The next thing are velas or candles. We have different ones that we have that some of my family members they just throughout their life they would always talk about a lot and so we try to pick ones that are also kind of you know specific to what they lived like and also um just kind of things that you know are our big brown uh devout catholic family um have just been like really committed to or really honored we have a um guardian angel and then two different versions of it so we'll just put it up there we also have you know sacred heart of jesus and then our lady the guadalupe um and more times than not um especially with um my culture is that while people did have really specific ties and strong connections to certain religious figures, it's not always, you know, tied with the religion itself. Um, I myself, I'm not religious, but um, I just like the significance and the power that it has, and it's so intertwined with our culture. You know, even personally with my own tattoos, I have like the Virgin Mary and the Last Supper on me, and it's not necessarily for the specific religious aspect to it, um, it's just so, it's another form of like just encapsulating yourself and just like fully surrounding yourself in the culture. Got one last one. Next are photos. I have in our house are, or my Theo Roger who passed away and my Tia Fina. And we put them up on either side um, by the guardian angels and another Bella, my grandparents as well. And so um, just because they both were really into like the Sacred Heart and certain, and the Virgen de Guadalupe, we place them specifically by those areas. You wanna really place certain things specifically in relation to the photos, um, just so that it is another offering and it's just, you know, really tying them to something that is keeping them alive and their spirit alive. A huge thing, especially with photos is keeping their appearance visible and having that type of visibility is keeping their spirits alive versus you don't want to not show somebody um, and just have random little, um, you know, little knickknacks and whatnot. Um, you want to be able to see them and um, remember them for how they were. Different ofrendas, and this is for um, this is where you do get specific according to who you are honoring. And this could be food, different things that they like to do. With my Theo Roger, who's into like gardening and fishing. So we have a little hat specific for him. And so it's like also besides food and that type of offering, hobbies. Um, he also you know, would always be chewing gum and had a toothpick in his mouth. So we definitely got to put that up there for him as well. Then my Tia Fina, she loves black licorice. 
she definitely had that all to herself. And then she was, she would make tamales around the new year. So that was another thing that we always had to get to experience and celebrate together. So definitely keeping in touch with hobbies and also their favorite uh, foods as well. So that way it's like you're having your own version of like a spirit meal with them. And lastly for her, she loved herself some good box wine. So all reliable right there by her. And then other things for my grandparents, we have a basket. Um, this one, just to make sure that it doesn't go bad immediately, uh, we have like um, these preserved pan dulces. And that is a huge part of Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos, because especially pan de muerto, it is another way to further tie yourself with your relatives. And it's something like that we all also eat. And it's something that you, um, you know, with a little bit of cafecito, you dip it in, you, you enjoy it. It's another version of a meal to celebrate and have with them. And it's also representative of, you know, the bread of life as well. Bugles for my grandpa. We love those. And then cards and dominoes because he was an avid um, poker player and domino player as um, well. Just to bring more light to the altar, we add more candles that we light um, eventually. So just as a guiding light for the spirits to also go on to the spirit world as well. And that's a huge thing also um, with light. It's just another layer of meaning and intention when um, setting up the altar. And something that I did for ours, um, because I'm an artist, of course, I had to put my own little spin on it. So I decorated a skull. It's just another version of bringing light to the dead. And it also is just representative of those loved ones that have passed on. Color is a huge part of the holiday for us. You know, when you add color to a canvas, you're just adding life to it and you're making it really celebrating and accentuating every single good part about it. And then we also have sugar skulls. The way that I have always interpreted it, it's just another way of representing and honoring your loved one with a tangible object. But it's also, you know, the sweetness of life and also, um, passing on and also celebrating their memories as well. So we put that one right here. Other things that um, can be incorporated into an altar are marigolds. Those have the specific meaning as far as, um, and are huge with the holiday, that their strong scent would help to guide those that have departed onto the afterlife. And it's also a bright, beautiful flower and it just, is so intertwined with that. One thing that we don't put on our altar, but that you may see, it's called an alebrije, and it's a decorated um, animal uh, or one that has many different parts. This one or the ones that I have, they don't necessarily have different um, animals combined into one. Um, more times than not, you'll see like dragon wings, a eagle head and then you know like a dog's body so it's kind of put all together and these are also a huge part of the holiday and that a lot of people got to be um, exposed to and see if y'all saw the Coco movie and they're the spirit guides for people and they really do connect them to the afterworld and it's just kind of being your own little representative of like your conscience. So it just helps to connect you and your lifestyle and your daily choices to those um, spirits that you are actually connected to um, and help just kind of guiding you throughout each day. So sometimes you will see this. We don't usually put it in ours, but um, I have them in my room. I have a whole bunch of them and it's another way to just, you know, tie yourself on a daily basis or connect yourself um, to those loved ones as well. Can you tell me a little bit about like what it was growing up with it? As a young girl, 
of the Pacific Northwest where you do have that type of disconnect with your culture as far as, you know, there's not a lot of um, direct connections. You kind of have to seek them out to, you know, my Chicana or Mexican background. And so my parents were always very adamant, like, no matter where we are in the country, even if we were fully submerged in an environment and in a community that have these strong cultural bonds, you are going to know where you come from. And we're going to be proud about that because it's another opportunity that you can also share with people and why you celebrate. So as a young girl, um, things like this and this holiday was, I always thought it was really cool because I loved how um, in your face it was. It Because it's so bold, it's so bright. And to be really celebrating your culture on that strong level, I loved it. Um, I think another distinction that growing up is that we were never necessarily taught to view death as scary, as something that you should be only sad about. It's really a celebration of life. And it doesn't mean that just because you have um, died that like your life or your soul is completely finished. Um, you know, always, you know, keeping the memories alive with, you know, those family members that are no longer with us or even friends and making sure that you have these kind of active attempts at keeping them and their spirit and soul alive and always like even sharing different stories about them, um, things like that. Um, I know a lot of my friends were never used to seeing something like this. And that's just because, you know, not having you know that readily accessible information or knowledge about it, but then being able to, you know, show them what everything means and how it's not just another version or extension of Halloween. It is so much more than that. It's not, um, you know, just here to scare people. It's more to invite people in and include them. And, um, you know, eventually even some of my friends, you know, started doing their own versions of it. Um, and that is completely disregarding their own cultural identity. It's just like, have a little thing set up here or helping to also kind of guide them and see, um, death and also people's spirits in a very different way that my culture and La Raza has always been like, this is something so natural and how to also reach out to people and make it seem that it's not completely sad when somebody dies because you still have these active memories of them. And there are these different ways that you can still keep them alive and with you um, regardless of where you're at in life. Um, and that's even, you know, with the Alebri and how that's also such a huge symbol um, with the culture is just because it's like your own version, your non, non-religious specific version of a guardian angel. I guess that's the best way I could essentially break it down and describe it. You know, how do you decide what you're going to put on your altar? Um, with us, we have definitely tried to put as many of them up. And I think, um, you know, with my parents, and it's nothing personal, obviously, because <laughs> we all have many um, family members, or a majority of us, um, who have died and who have passed on. And it's not because um, we prefer one or over the other. I think in our household, it was more people that we really had these strong bonds and connections with um that we you know when they did die i mean it, it was like a what we call a golpe de pecho it's like one of those like deeply ones that is just like oof man but um yeah i think with my family it was definitely one of those that it was people that we got to <clears throat> regularly interact with and that we had an abundance of memories with and we had those really strong connections and ties with, um, that's how we decide, or I feel like that's a, a strange word to, to do because it's like you're picking members of a team, but it's just like, I guess that's how we kind of narrow it down and hone in 
on who we have honored. Um, but that's also why, you know, there's these general um, symbols as well that could encapsulate and also include um, different family members that we may not have so many pictures of, or we may not have known that many specific parts of their life um, as well. So just like when we say, like that's just a generic um, symbol and item to include. Um, that's pretty much a universal thing that is included in um, an altar. And then even, um, you know, our little version of like a tamal um, as well, so that it's just open to other people as well um, to share a meal and celebrate with as well. So while things are meant to be super specific and intentional, there's such a broad um, open ended meaning to everything that it does help to include every single person as well. So if you have um, multiple family members building altars in your own homes, um, mm -hmm. do you do the same people? Do you do different people? That's in my household, we only have one, one altar. Um, we do have like different things here and there for people, but I feel like um, just to make sure that all of the like spiritual folks is in one um, condensed location that everybody could gather around versus it being like a more disconnected or separate holiday for everybody. Um, we have one for ourselves. Um, but I know that in my family, my sisters also have their own versions of their altares. Like my sister, Catherine, or we call her Celeste, um, her godfather was my Theo Roger. And so she definitely pays homage to him in her own specific way, however she was connected to him and whatever symbols that remind her the most of him as well. And then the same with my other sister, Amanda, um, her godmother was my um, Tia Pina. And so she also has certain things that are specific to her relationship and how she was able to get to know her as well on her own version of it. And, you know, the different altars and ofrendas, um, since there is such a broad way that people can interpret it and that they can um, essentially like execute the setup, um, it's definitely something personal to you. I mean, these are just general examples of how like we most, um, got to remember and know um, our family members. Um, however, people's personal relationship was to uh, any given loved one, they would set up things that are very specific to him. Um, so for all I know, it's like my grandparents could have liked golf and you would have something up there, but that would also depend on if I had known that part or if that had been something that say me and my grandpa or my grandma that we got to bond over. That would be something that I would then include in that. So for people who are outside this culture, um, mm -hmm. what would you like them to know? Or like, how can somebody who's outside of the culture respectfully observe Dia de los Muertos? If you're able to set up your own altar, um, doing things that are specific to yourself, and your own identity, and also to those people that um, you have lost. And keeping it as neutral as possible. You walk into certain stores and you know that it isn't necessarily run by somebody who shares the um, cultural identity to the holiday. It's almost off-putting and how it's been now kind of pushed more towards the Hallow Halloween-y side of how people will either paint their faces or use it more as a costume rather than as something that is truly reverent to us. You know, even with my friends that aren't, um, they're not, you know, brown, brown girls like me or brown people like me, they, um, they don't go as deep in, like they won't put a papel picado because they also, while I have provided them with, you know, a decent amount of knowledge about it, they're not going to take it upon themselves to also absorb that uh, because they truly personally cannot connect 
with that specific symbolism or also like with the alebrije, um, there are certain things that I feel like people are able to just kind of like filter for their own lives um, and also see like what is appropriate. And obviously like if you're not comfortable with like, you know, putting up a painted skull, you definitely don't have to. It's just something that um, we were always so used to seeing as well. And it's so intertwined with the holiday for us. That is why we include certain things. Um, but other things, you know, just like, you know, candles um, that aren't specific to anybody or any one culture, you can definitely incorporate things like that. The main emphasis, I guess you could say, is to really put the focus on your family members or your loved ones and not worrying about all of these different super, super minute details that are specific to the culture. And that's what I definitely wanted to try to make accessible for other people to see that it is so customizable, but it doesn't have to be appropriative. That's just, that's a huge thing. This is just what we specifically do for us. And these are the uh, significance behind each symbolism. But I definitely understand, you know, that people don't um, have that same bond with certain things and symbols like we do. And that is completely fine. I think the thing that, and I hear this from other people too, is that you do see it like the Adela Martos right next to Halloween stuff. And, yeah. you know, not growing up with those traditions and things, it can be really easy to just conflate the two, which they're obviously, they're very separate things. Right? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> things change over the century. Uh, this one thing has, you know, really stuck with us. And I know that even on a historical note, you know, once the Spaniards came over and the Aztecs were like, you know, this is, this is the holiday, this is like what we're doing. And the Spaniards to be giving them all that flack for it. And they're like, um, no, thank you. Like we are going to stick to our, you know, celebrations. And it's something that isn't um, wicked. Just like, you know, how Spaniards, you know, um, back then were just messing things up for people trying to like kill the vibe. And so, um, and I think being able to at least hold on to that part is huge and it is so important because it is universal. Like everybody, you know, for the most part knows somebody that has died and it's a great way to, you know, honor them and to keep their memory alive and um to not be sad about it it's you want to remember them for even if some people did some bad stuff it's fine but you definitely want to remember them for like the great soul that they that you were able to have in your life and to really celebrate that and bring um bring light to it as well